Well, the Nashville Predators haven't made a lot of noise this offseason, so let's just make some stuff up, shall we? Today, we're going to be looking at three big-name players reportedly on the block, Matthew Kachuk, JT Miller, and Patrick Laine, and we are going to put together fictional trade packages to bring them to Smashville. Are they realistic? Would the other teams go for it? Or are me and Ann just fantasizing uh, to get something to happen? You be the judge today on the Lockdown Predators podcast. Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Predators your first listen of the day every single day. I'm Nick Morgan. I'm a writer and editor at OnTheForeCheck.com, and I have a partner in crime. You do. I am Ann Kimmel. I'm a writer at OnTheForeCheck.com. Well, in the words of Gary Bettman, we have a train to announce. <laughs> oh, gosh. That was so painfully amazing. <laughs> Yeah. There needs to be like more head movement as he's saying stuff too. Uh, yes. I don't know why he does that. Hopefully it's nothing medical related or else I'll feel like a real jerk. Yeah. Um, that was the most convincing shrug I think you could have given. <laughs> uh, I know. I, I feel really bad about that. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So what we're going to do today is we are going to do David Boyle's job for him because uh, – Right now, there's a lot of people not too happy with the fact the Preds haven't gone out and gotten another top six score. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are going to help them out a little bit. What we're going to do is we are going to look at three big name players reportedly on the block. Uh, Matthew Kachuk, who in Calgary, uh, he's just filed for arbitration. If things go his way, he can be an unrestricted free agent. Uh, coming up here soon, and if that happens, uh, there's a good chance the Flames probably will look to trade him because uh, they can't have another Johnny Gaudreau situation. Uh, there's Patrick Laine, uh, who is a restricted free agent right now for the Columbus Blue Jackets, uh, but word around there is that the Blue Jackets don't really have an interest in bringing him back for the money, and uh, the Laine himself doesn't have a lot of interest to stay for the Columbus Blue Jackets. And then there's JT Miller, who has been on the block for the Vancouver Canucks for pretty much about a full calendar year now. Uh, he is coming off a 99-point season. Uh, the Canucks said, well, you know, we're not desperate. We may hold on to him until the trade of mine. Take one look at their cap situation. Uh, and, yeah, you can see that's probably not true. So, and... They have some options there. You know, if the Preds really wanted to swing for the fences, mm -hmm. there's options there. There are. And I think people are sort of waiting with bated breath for the Predators to do a little bit of anything at this point. Because while they've made some smaller moves and addressed some smaller issues with the team, the big one, the big glaring need is just still there. It's still there. It's like, you know, did David Poyle drop his phone in the couch cushions? Like what is going on? Is there no, is there nothing? Is there no, but there really haven't even been rumors or whispers of things. So, I mean, I feel like we just have to take it upon ourselves to create some, you know, trade magic. Yeah. Give them something. Let's give the people what they want. And here's the thing. There's other trades out there that the Preds could make. Uh, mm -hmm. But these are the three most fun ones. Andrew. Oh, heavens, that yes. Is, that is the entertainment value we bring to you every day on the Lockdown Predators podcast. Mm -hmm. So uh, how this is going to work is Ann and I each have come up with a trade proposal for the respective team that we think both that the other team will go for and that we think the Preds would be willing to give up. So it's not, you know, you know, nobody here is trading, um, you know, Cody Glass and a first round pick for Matthew Kachuk because uh, that would be super unrealistic. Uh, that face scared me. But <laughs> no, but I don't. I didn't do quite that. 
Okay. We didn't do quite that. Yeah, we are going for things that we think the other team yeah. would go for and that, you know, the Preds would go for. And it would kind of be a win-win for both teams. We came up yes. with proposals. Uh, when we're done, we're going to put this, of course, on YouTube, on Megaphone, anywhere you get your podcast. Uh, and we want to hear from you which one of us you think had the better offer. Which one do you think the other team would go for more. Um, mm -hmm. this, we were looking for feedback. So make sure you're jotting down our proposals and grade ours. Yeah, All I right. don't, I, I really feel like you're going to win this in a landslide, but you know, I'll give it a whirl. <laughs> no, well, don't sell yourself short right now. A, because you're going to get some pity votes. B, oh, I love that. I received that. <laughs> Hey, let's start, shall we? All we right. should. Okay, let's start with a name that we know 100% is on the block. It's mm -hmm. been on the block for quite some time. Yes. That's Vancouver and JT Miller. Yes, JT Miller. We have talked about JT Miller before, and it stunk in a lot of ways because then got really excited about the idea of JT Miller on this team. And um, just a couple of days ago, Elliot Friedman was on 1025 and they kind of talked about JT Friedman and he was like, look, like that would be an incredible fit in Nashville. And he's not wrong. I think he listened to our podcast and we convinced him. Um, JT Miller would be a fantastic fit in Nashville. I think um, last season was a great season. Like you said, a 99 point season, 29 years old. This, this style of play would be great. Um, Vancouver is in a little bit of a pickle, uh, cap wise, a little bit of a pickle. So they need some cap space. Um, and the other thing that Vancouver <clears throat> needs is a little defensive help. So putting all of this together and trying to come up with something that I could emotionally live with. Um, and you'll be proud. None of my trades involve three teams bringing Ren Pitlick back. So you're welcome on that. But this is what I kind of came up with for my trade. If we were to get JT Miller, okay. what if, just hear me out on this. What if we traded Dante Fabro and somebody and this one hurts me a little bit, Luke Evangelista and maybe a third round draft pick next season. And brought in JT Miller. I have a lot. Of, like, I don't know that it would work. But that's what I was. That's what I felt like I was willing to offer. And like a kidney. <laughs> because he. And a kidney. <laughs> because he would be amazing. But I think, I, you know, it would give Vancouver cap space. It would give them a decent defenseman. And I threw in something just to be nice. Well, and a kidney. And here's the thing, Anne. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny that you say Dante Fabro because he was in my deal. Ooh. And is when you look at Vancouver, uh, they're pretty stacked on the left side of the defensive core. Mm -hmm. You turn around and you look at the right side of the defensive core, uh, there is absolute garbage on the <laughs> right hand side. Bless. You talk to people in Vancouver, that's kind of the number one concern is mm -hmm. they're looking for a right-handed defenseman or at least a right-side defenseman to play with Quinn Hughes to be kind of yes. their number one overhand guy. Dante Fabro makes perfect sense because the Preds, if they make a big move, they're going to have to shell out uh, some money or yes. they're going to have to like, shed some contract is what I'm trying to say. Right. Uh, Fabro's cap is about $2.4 um, mm -hmm. and he's a free agent at the end of next season. So, you know, there, there's concern about whether the Predators would keep him or not. Um, the one thing about Vancouver is their backs against the wall. But when you hear, um, you know, you, you'd heard new GM Patrick Alvin uh, talk earlier this week about JT Miller. And he said, well, you know, right now we're exploring that maybe we're going to hold on to him until the trade deadline. In my best Brian Windhorse voice, now, why is that? <laughs> that is because uh, these basically trying to drive up the price for JT Miller. Yeah. Now, we heard in the end of last season that they're looking for an astronomical pack. They are. JT Miller, yes. uh, including maybe multiple first, a high prospect and a player that can play right now. 
I don't think they're going to get that. I mm-hmm. think teams, A, for one, JT Miller is a free agent, unrestricted free agent at the end of this coming season. So there's not going to be a lot of teams that want to shell out cash uh, unless they yes. get into a long-term deal. This is probably going to be more of a one-year rental deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and two, like people know Vancouver's backs are against the wall. Yeah. Uh, they need to free up cap space, and they don't have a lot of maneuverability to work with the team they have heading into the season. Although they did finish good, there are a lot of holes that they need to address yes. and to basically start rebuilding their core. So with that in mind, here's what I think. Mm-hmm. I have a JT Miller mm-hmm. and a 2023 second round pick. Coming to the Nashville Predators. For okay. Oh no. A, a 2023 first round pick. Okay. So you're basically swapping a middle first round pick for a middle se- uh, second round pick. Okay. Not a Fabro. Mm-hmm. And to keep the defensive theme going, Ryan Ufko. <gasps> yeah, okay. Ryan. It, it, it's a tough one to swallow, but. Like he is, you look at kind of the Preds D mm-hmm. for you know the next couple of years. Uh, they brought in Ryan McDonough for three more years. Roman Yossi is obviously Roman Yossi. You're gonna have Alex Carrier on that right hand side, and from what a lot of people are saying, Matthias Ekholm also on the right hand side. So there's your top three for the next couple of years. Right, it's gonna suck maybe losing a young up and coming defenseman like Ryan Ufko. I think a lot of people maybe see him as like a Sammy Gerrard type guy, Mm -hmm. Uh, that guy who's, you know, maybe on the verge of kind of being a breakout, just needs somebody with a little bit of a clear depth chart in front of them. Um, But I think this a kind of rebuilds Vancouver's defensive core uh, and the predators. When you kind of look at the grand scheme of things, they're not losing a lot. They're losing a first round pick, but they're getting a second round pick in return. You're basically swapping picks. Fair. Uh, e. Miller and two pretty good young defensemen for Vancouver mm-hmm. to kind of rebuild their core around. So here's my question for you, because this is something that I wrestled with too when I was putting some of these together. Because, and I say this, I say this with kindness and love in my heart. But when you look at the Predators' defensive prospects. I feel like there are maybe one or two that really are going to develop into something. Ryan Efko being one of them. And do we really want to give them away? Do we? Well, do do you feel like at some point the predator, like I don't want there to be a gap where the predators are like, whoops. Well, it's it's happened before. We, we know that Uh, we know that the predators maybe got a little bit too over eager about trading some of their blue line depth in the past. Yeah. Um, But you know, you're going for need right now. And I think this is a big need to kind of make this team competitive right now. And I think that's the David Poyle strategy is he is looking for, for guys that can help him play right now. And mm-hmm. I think this JT Miller trade certainly does that. And, you know, the Predators still do have some firepower on defense. You know, Mark Del Geizo looks like a guy who has kind of risen up the ranks over a little bit. Jeremy Lazan is still there. The Predators still right. develop maybe into a bottom four defenseman to kind of lock that up, um, which would maybe allow Carrier to move up a little bit. And let's not forget Luke Prokop has also, you know, was kind right. of a, was kind of a middle of the ground prospect for a lot of for a long time, but he's really come out of nowhere mm-hmm. to really seize the day. So yeah. I, I think there's options back there. The Predators obviously I think need to kind of rebuild that defensive core. But if you're looking at what the big strategy is, which is win right now, mm-hmm. I think this might be the move for Nashville is to maybe reach into the defensive cookie jar one more time. Oh gosh. Um, it's something to play. That makes me very, very nervous. I mean, I thought about the same thing, but I was like, oh, I yeah. feel like I feel like we've seen this movie. Yeah. Well, let's move on to a couple other people. We got Patrick Line and mm-hmm. we got Matthew Kachuk. So we have trade offers for them. First, though, want to mention today's show brought to you by our friends at Built Bar, who have a yet another new flavor coming to your taste buds. It's coconut brownie 
Chunk Puff. Uh, you probably tried the amazing Coconut Brownie Chunked Built Bar. Well, guess what? They're now in puff form. Built Bar Puffs are protein-infused marshmallows covered in 100% real chocolate. Coconut Brownie Chunk is just the newest flavor to that lineup. Uh, it sounds like a delicious dessert, but don't let that fool you. Built Bars are good for you. They're low calorie, low sugar, high in protein, and absolutely delicious. Coconut Brownie Chunk Puffs are only here for a limited time, so make sure you go to Built.com right now to make sure you don't miss out. Uh, if that's not your thing, don't worry. Built Bar totally has a bunch of other fantastic flavors, uh, including many in Puffs form. We got Mud Pie. We've got... Uh, churro, we've got lemon meringue pie, totally a bunch of flavors to choose from. So there's something to satisfy every craving. Uh, so go to built.com right now and use promo code locked 15 to get 15% off your order. Again, promo code locked 15 for 15% off at built.com. All right. And next on our fake trade list, we have <laughs> Patrick Line. Mm -hmm. uh, a bit of an interesting guy, Patrick Line, uh, because he was traded from Winnipeg mm -hmm. uh, after a big season in Winnipeg, in which then kind of petered out a little bit. Then he went to Columbus, not a groundbreaking start, but had a absolutely huge bounce back year last year. Now he's a restricted free agent and on the market again. Which is kind of hard. Like he's 24 years old, right? And a, uh, like a former 44 goal scorer. So it's kind of hard to imagine why teams keep putting this guy on the block. Yeah, well, and especially like as you're kind of thinking through this, and of course, the thing that everybody is talking about right now when it comes to Columbus is that they just signed Johnny Gaudreau. Well, if you're Patrick Line. Wouldn't you just want to play a little bit with Johnny Gaudreau? So I, I, there's a part of me that's like, how is this really going to play out? But, you know, Columbus is going to have to do something because they literally, you know, kind of sold the farm a bit to get Gaudreau there. And so, you know, maybe there's a little Patrick Line magic available for the Nashville Predators. So tell me, what is your proposal for getting Patrick Line to come to the Nashville Predators? Well, what do the Preds need? They need a scoring winger. Yes. Line A is. Uh, what do the Columbus Blue Jackets have, Anne? They have Johnny Gaudreau, mm -hmm. who is a uh, absolute, He's not bad. He is an absolutely fantastic <laughs> scoring winger. Mm -hmm. um, who's his center going to be next year? Cole Sillinger, gonna... who's, you know, had a good breakout year, but he's still young. Yeah. Jack Roslovic, maybe, who's, you know, fine. Kent Johnson, okay. still not 100% ready. They need a bona fide number one center. Oh, no. For Johnny Gaudreau to play with. Mm -hmm. And if the Preds want to bring in Patrick Laine, who's going to have a big contract, they're going to need to clear a big contract off their books. Choose wisely, friend. So what's the trade, <laughs> Anne? How about a Columbus reunion, which is weird that you could say that about either of the Preds' top two centers. Yeah. Ryan Johansson. Okay. Patrick Line A, one for one. We are on the exact same page. But I have questions. I have questions. But this was that was exactly where I was. I was like, you know, the trade that makes the most sense is, is Johansson for Line A. Now, feelings aside, we love Funkle Joey. We wouldn't really want to get rid of him. But this is a very intriguing idea on a number of levels. Here are my follow-up questions for you. So help me think this through. What would the Nashville top six lines look like then? Get rid I, of Johansson, bring in line eight. Talk me through the top six. I think you would move Duchesne back to center. Okay. I think Granlin is your second line center. Okay. I think somebody young, mm -hmm. whether that be Tanner Janot moving up. 
Uh, or maybe this is where you give our old buddy um, Phil Tomasino a better shot. I think they move into a top line role. And if there's somebody who I think can really unlock some consistency in Patrick Line, I think that person is Mikhail Granlund. Yes. Mikhail Granlund, yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, who has done a very good job of working with young players, uh, Luke Tunnan aside. Um, and he is a bona fide playmaker. He is a smart, heady player. Mm -hmm. And he's somebody who has a little bit of an international experience with line A, with both of them being yes. fans. Uh, so there's some familiarity there. I think, um, you know, Granlund is somebody that I think can kind of mentor him and maybe help him, you know, kind of become a more consistent, grounded sort of player. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what? You have Cody Glass in the system who yes. you know, I think if you're going to take a chance on him being an everyday center, you know, it's it's got to be this year. You know, I mm -hmm. think he's going to move into that role. Um, you know, you also have, you know, Col Colton Sisson still down the middle. So I I think there is plenty of stability there in center for the Nashville Predators uh, that you can go out and get a pure goal score in line A. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was trying to piece it together because I, I like this deal. And again, love Ryan Johansson, would hate to see him go. But I like this deal. But for me, I come back to, is Phil Tomasino ready? Um, I like the idea of Tanner Janot moving up. I think that makes, you know, I think he's ready. I think that makes sense. But when you look at it, do you feel like this trade would make the Nashville Predators better? Yeah. You do? I do. Yeah. Okay. I, I think it's just, I think it's kind of comparable in terms of Ford. I think it's maybe not necessarily, oh, you know, they're, they're getting a better player. I think they're getting a different player. I think they're getting yeah. a player that fills a different need, mm -hmm. you know, giving away, you know, kind of a pure play maker, play creator for a play finisher. So I don't True. think it's like, you know, I wouldn't say like, you know, Johansson or Line A, like one is absolutely better than the other one. Mm -hmm. I think they're different. I think they're different players. Um, and I think that Line A is more of what the Predators need right now. Because yeah. look at, you know, pure playmakers. You already have Granlund. You already have Shane. Line A, I think, gives them a little bit of a different look. What's your trade, Anne? Um, my trade is Ryan Johansson for Patrick Line. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. But it, 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 you know, I was like, this is just the thing that makes sense. But the question that I kept turning over is, is, is this going, and he, is it going to make the top six better? Is Philip Tomasino ready? Is Tanner Janot ready to be top six? And you know, I keep coming back to, you know, that top line of Forsberg, Duchesne, Granlin, like you hate to to mess with that. But I think as long as you can keep Duchesne and Forsberg together and throw like Geno on that line and then, you know, Granlin, I agree with what you say. Granlin, it, he brings out a lot in the players on his line as well. So maybe that would be um, an opportunity for Tomasino. I just, I, I worry... You know, I'm like, is this going to make that second line better? Patrick Line a makes the second line better, but you just, I don't want to be in a position where we trade um, Ryan Johansson away and we're still left with a second line that needs another second line player. And I hope that Philip Tomasino is ready, but he's just such a little sprout. Like well, there's a part of me that worries. Well, and that's the other thing too, when you kind of look at this trade, um, you know, Patrick Line is going to get, you know, a pretty big deal. Yes. Um, but also you're losing a pretty big deal in Ryan. True. Johansson. So if you make this trade and you re-sign Line to maybe like an $8 million a year contract or something mm -hmm. around that lines, you still conceivably have enough cap space to go out and get another player. Maybe our buddy Phil Kessel. Like the, Where is Phil? If you make this trade and it really is one for one, right? There's options for the Nashville Predators. 
there's yeah. still options out there for the Nashville Predators. Yeah. I I I would feel like Line A would probably want more than eight million, but I would be interested in this trade. And it would take a lot to pry Joe Hansen out of my cold dead hands because we love him, but I really would be intrigued by this. Yeah. Very intrigued by this one. So yeah, I think I think we're we're on the same page. It makes me nervous, but interested nervous. Like jumping out of an airplane nervous. Could be fun. Yeah. Could die. Uh, they could, yeah. <laughs> either either, either option. Yeah. Uh, there's one more player to talk about, Anne, and it may be the most intriguing of all. Yes, yes. We are going to buckle down and we're going to look at one more trade option because Nick and I have some ideas. Yeah, that is, of course, Mr. Matthew Kachuk. Now, Matthew Kachuk, that is the trade that is the most interesting one because, Mm -hmm. look, we know JT Miller and Patrick Laine are on the block. Mm -hmm. We're not sure what the deal is with Matthew Kachuk yet because, as it stands now, uh, he is a restricted free agent. He just elected salary arbitration, so nobody can swoop in and uh, offer him up which, boy, that would have been some uh, fun chaos. Um, we also, from what we can tell, we we don't even know if Calgary wants to trade him. Uh, right. Reports that they're trying to work out a big long-term deal for him. But remember, if he gets to arbitration, he can theoretically become an unrestricted free agent just around the corner. So... Yeah. I, oh my gosh. I don't think the Calgary Flames would like to lose him for nothing like they just did with Johnny Gaudreau. Yes. So, this to me, Anne, this might have to be the one trade where you maybe overpay. Yes, I would agree with that. I think this is. This is a ballsy move. If this were to be something that David Poyle would do, this would be a, oh my gosh, kind of move. But I'm here for the chaos. And, you know, with uh, Johnny Gaudreau gone, is Matthew Kachuk going to want to stay there? You know, he's, there have been whispers that he wants to come to the U.S. We're lovely people. So, Tell me, what is your Matthew Kachuk proposal? Because this one I'm super interested in as well. This is just chaos. This is insanity, and I'm here for it. Uh, I'm debating whether or not you're going to like this one or not. Well, we've already lost Ren Pitlick, so like, what more can people do to me? <laughs> well... <laughs> And, oh, and you don't. And this is another thing in which the Preds are probably going to have to shed some salary. Yeah. Uh, and when you look at Vancouver, who might lose Matthew Kachuk, and they might lose, or they, I mean, Calgary lost Johnny Gaudreau. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The Flames have already lost Johnny Gaudreau. They might lose Matthew Kachuk. They're going to need young forwards to play with. Mm-hmm. So, Matthew Kachuk. And prospect Matthew Phillips, who's kind of an up and coming guy for uh, the Nashville Predators or for the Calgary Flames. Okay. They come to Nashville. Okay. To Calgary, we have a 2023 first round pick. Okay. 2024 third round pick. Wow. We have Ellie Tolvanen. And we have Phil Tomasino. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's a that's a lot, but wow. hear me out. This isn't a situation in which you lose your top, you lose people from your top True. six, adding to your top six. Yes. So there's you know kind of the caveat there. You don't have to do any major reshuffling at the top of your lineup like you would have done for the line A for Johansson trade a little bit. This is just a pure addition. Now. Losing Tomasino and Tolvanen, yeah, those create two holes kind of in the bottom of your lineup. But those are easier to fill. A little Very bit. true. Like, you know, you can conceivably move Tanner Janot up and have him be that last sixth 
you know, that, you know, mm-hmm. the missing winger from that top six, which is for what sure was last year. Yeah. Um, and then you kind of look at your bottom six. Well, you know, now you need a spot open on the herd line. That's easier to fill. I mean, hey, mm-hmm. Zachary Lahiru, if he kind of comes up out of nowhere, oh maybe gosh. that's something he plays in a couple of years. Yeah. Um, maybe that's where Zach Sanford goes. And then, you know, for the bottom of the, your bottom of your lineup, like, I mean, for God's sakes, Michael McCarron came in last year and played well. Yeah. Like, yeah. you can find affordable fourth line players. You still have a little bit of flexibility with this trade if you want to go out and maybe bring in, you know, a good bottom pair forward. Now, the the cap crunch from this is maybe going to be a little bit of a something to talk yeah. about because who knows what Matthew Kachuk's contract is going to be. Um, mm-hmm. If the Reds make this trade, uh, they have about $10 million worth of cap space to play with, and a lot of that is going to go to a Matthew Kachuk contract. Yes. So maybe yeah. there, there may be another parallel move from this. Like maybe Dante Fabro has to come off the books for yes. you know, kind of a cheap young forward uh, or maybe some futures. So there may be some finagling out of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, but hey, like like we said, this was the one that was going to be the biggest overpay. Uh, but this also an would maybe give you the most legit long-term piece. Yes. Um, I, and I I agree with that. I think you have to be careful because Kachuk's going to be, you know, he's going to, even if they do a one-year deal and they get him in here, whatever, like he's going to be an investment. He's going to be a, a major cap investment. So I sort of went a little bit of a different way, but sort of not. Um, I thought what, you know, put Johansson out there again, which, you know, throw in Fabro because I think that's, he's, I think, you know, get, get a little cap space and, you know, I think we're okay. Um, possibly Tolvin in and then a draft pick, like a third round draft pick was kind of what I was thinking. But I don't know. I don't know. I I will say I I would be willing to overpay a little bit uh, for Matthew Kachuk. And I and I hear what you're saying. It's a it's a lot easier to replace somebody in the third and fourth lines. I just I don't know. I don't know. It's it's a risk, and but I think it's a risk the Predators need to take too. It would be bold. That yeah. would be a bold all the chips in kind of move for the predators for sure. Yeah. It also doesn't leave them with a lot of wiggle room. If something <laughs> absolutely goes haywire. Very uh, true. So I think that, but that's, that's, I think going to be the thing with Matthew Kachuk is, you know, whichever trade team trades for him, um, it's going to be an overpay because mm-hmm. Calgary would prefer they lock him up long-term. Um so, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be sort of an interesting thing. Mm-hmm. All right. So which one of these three players that we talked about today, would you most want to have on the Predators roster? What I want, most want to have, or what trade do you think I think would be like the most affordable? Both. The player I think I would most want to have was Matthew Kachuk. Uh-huh. Yeah. The person I think is most realistic is mm-hmm. JT Miller. Okay. Interesting. I would most want to have either Kachuk or JT Miller, nothing against line A, but I think line A is this is the easiest trade. I think it's the trade that makes, you know, makes sense, but you know, we're not in charge, which seems ridiculous after this episode. We really should be in charge. We really should be. We should be. Yeah. Um, well, that is, uh, yeah, we, yeah. we that, that's our trades. We want to hear what you think. Uh, let us know on our YouTube page, Locked on Predators. Uh, leave a comment on the video and let us know which trade proposals of ours you would go for or make up one of your own. Yeah, or I'd be interested. You would trade for some of these players, a deal that would maybe make sense. You can either leave it on a YouTube page or tweet us at LO underscore Predators. Uh, we will uh, review your feedback. Hey, and maybe yeah. on a future show, say uh, what we thought or was uh, our better, best listener-created proposals. Yeah, let's see it. Yeah. Uh, and where can the people find your work? 
You can find my work at on the four check.com and you can find me on Twitter at Ann K underscore mama on ice. I'm Nick Morgan. You can read my work at on the four check.com or follow me on Twitter at underscore NS Morgan. That's going to do it for us today on the locked on predators podcast. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We'll be back tomorrow with an all new episode. See you then.